Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In the first story, the customer went on to tell our OP that he was completely wrong, that she was a lawyer, and that she should get all the items for free because the law says so. Well, the customer's always right. So before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. The customer is always right. So I've worked in retail for about seven years now. This is from a few years ago. Background. I was working as a supervisor in customer service at a large chain supermarket. Where I live, there's a thing called scanning policy. This is when an item scans at a higher price than it's ticketed for. If this happens, you get it for free. Now with this policy, if you have multiple of the item, you get the first one free and the rest at the correct price. Remember this. I was the supervisor on duty for a close shift. The only person above me in the store at the time was the duty manager who works in groceries. She's never worked in customer service. I had a customer come up to me and right off the bat, she was rude. She slams her receipt down on the table and informs me that I, yes, me specifically, had overcharged her for an item that was on special. She'd bought 10 of them for a specific reason that they were on special. I apologized to her and went to get the ticket. This lets us confirm that 1. It did scan wrong, 2. That it wasn't human error, e.g. wrong ticket on wrong item, and 3. So that the price can be fixed in the system before it's put back up so we're not constantly giving away free things. I came back up to the counter and apologized again, said she was correct, and just to make things go smoothly, I offered to give her 5 of the items for free and the rest at the special price. This is where she flipped. She demanded all of them for free as they all scanned wrong. I explained to her what the scanning policy was and that I was actually giving her more for free than I should have been. She proceeded to tell me that I was completely wrong and that she was a lawyer and that she was to get all the items for free as that's what the law stated. I calmly explained to her again that that isn't the law for a scanning policy. This is when she demanded a manager. I informed her I was essentially the manager of service at the moment, but I would be happy to get my duty manager, so off I went. I explained everything quickly to the duty manager, and she wasn't really sure as she'd never had to deal with the scanning policy before. I informed her that we had government-issued pamphlets on it in the office, if she wouldn't mind popping up to get one for me so I could show the customer. I went back to the customer to inform her what my duty manager was getting. The biggest grin slipped onto her face, and she just said, good. My duty manager comes back and hands me the scanning policy form. She then turns to the customer and before she even has a chance to complain, my duty manager informs her that she's leaving the customer with me as I was currently in charge of service and left. The lady still had a satisfied smile on her face, so I calmly placed the pamphlet on the table, flipped it to the multiple item selections of the scanning policy and pointed to it. I couldn't contain my smile as I watched hers disappear the more she read. Once she was finished, she just looked at me and didn't say anything. I then continued to process her items, giving her the first item for free and the rest for the special price. I turned to her and explained that as per the policy, she's gotten the first item for free and the rest at the special price and informed her that I would refund her a total of X dollars rather than XXX dollars I was originally offering her. She didn't say a word, just took the money and left. And our second story. Yes, Karen, I went on a holiday thousands of kilometers away to traumatize your kids and infest the ocean. This happened two and a half years ago. I was 15 at the time, now I'm 18. This incident came to my mind today, to the day exactly 10 years after the primary cause of this incident was created. What is it, you might ask? It's a skin condition, vitiligo. Basically, white patches appear around your skin in sometimes interesting patterns. I won't specify the country, nor exact time. As well, keep in mind that it happened in 2018, so something might not reflect how it exactly was, and I'll be paraphrasing a bit. I first saw Karen while waiting to board a plane. However, I didn't interact with her until her refueling stop some five to six hours later. Why, you might ask? The flight departed between midnight and 1 a.m., so obviously we flew in the dark and most people were asleep, or were trying. We landed during daybreak. We weren't allowed to leave the plane. I was sitting, playing something on a tablet, 
siblings seated with me were miraculously asleep. Gosh, how I envied them, when Karen and two kids have walked by to use the lavatory. Karen is Karen, D is Karen's daughter, S is Karen's son, S. Look, Mom, what happened to her? Karen. Something about me being insolent for looking like that? D. Let's go, Mom. Then they're coming back. Karen. Um, you seem to attract a lot of attention to how you look. Me. Please, ma'am, keep it down. I don't want to wake them up. Karen. Sure, don't exhibit yourself like this. You're scaring my children. I was wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and shorts. Yes, on a plane. Like, I'm not entering a 40 degrees Celsius heat in a hoodie and jeans, and definitely not changing in the tiny lavatory. M, my mom, across the aisle. Is there a problem? Karen. If you're the mother, tell her to cover up. M. You're not going to tell me how to raise my daughter. Now please get back to your seat and leave us alone, or I'm calling the flight attendant. Karen stomped off with her kids. Five to six more hours later, my destination. After going through the passport, comma, visa, comma, baggage stuff, and other stuff like that, we were headed to the bus, which was to take us to a hotel. And guess who was on the same bus? Yes, Karen. However, she didn't cause any scenes. After three and a half hours of ride on roads, which appeared to be made mostly of holes, dirt, and giant speed bumps, we finally reached our hotel. And who left the bus as well? If you guessed Karen and her family, you're correct. Great. I haven't seen neither of Karen's family very much other than knowing that my little siblings, brother four and sister six, have fell in quite well with Karen's kids. Skip forward a few days. I went with my siblings in the sea. We obviously were in a very shallow water. After some time, Karen's daughter and son, DNS, came as well, and the five of us began playing and goofing around. DNS could have been like seven or eight. DNS didn't seem bothered at all by how I looked. And then along came Karen. With almost no people near, she saw it as a chance to remind me of the past years. Karen, what are you doing there with my kids? Me, uh, nothing, ma'am. We were just playing here. Is it wrong? Karen, yes, it's wrong. Look at yourself. They'll have nightmares of you, and you're contaminating the ocean. Me, they don't seem bothered about me, and it's not contagious. Karen, I don't care. People like you should not go on holidays. You should have stayed at home. I sent my siblings to get my parents, who were at the bar. Me. Please, ma'am, leave me alone. I'm not happy with it either. Please, just leave me alone. Karen. Then GTFO. How can you walk around in that two-piece with how disgusting it looks? Me, now in tears. Please go away. I don't like it either. I just want to be left alone, and I won't bother you. Karen. No. Not until I talk to those who thought that bringing a freak of nature here to cause offense is a good idea. I, in tears, ran off past my parents who were now headed to confront Karen. I, however, stopped only to take the key from our room and ran off to our room where I broke down. My parents and Karen then got into an argument which attracted quite a lot of attention. I'm keeping the rest for myself for the sake of not sounding too familiar to someone and to keep this short. DNS weren't allowed to play with my siblings, however, I didn't get any more crap from Karen and her husband apologized profusely when he met me by the pool the evening before our flight home. Karen never told me anything on the way home, neither did the rest of her family. Today, much bigger part of my body is affected, yet I've never felt better about how I look. WTF? That's ridiculous. And our next story. Coins galore. I work at a fuel place in Australia. We have laws that prohibit paying for stuff with a huge, insane pile of coins. I think the rule is generally 10 times the face value of the coin, so 10 $1 coins, etc. However, this law does not apply for petrol if the person claims they have no other way of payment. So, of course, we get frustrating people who just want to get rid of their change. So, one night, I'm on by myself and a guy fills up his car and comes in. The price is $80.75, so I tell him and he starts pulling out bags of coins. I sigh inwardly and make a point to ask him if he has any other way to pay as there won't be enough room left in our tills. He smirks, says no, and rubs it in my face that we have to accept it. Fine. I start counting. I soon notice that as he's emptying the bags that it will barely equal the price, 
Likely he counted all the coins, then filled up to the exact number. Hmm. As he's getting out one of the last bags of five cent coins, I notice one slips off the counter behind some confectionery. If the guy hadn't been a jerk, I'd have pointed it out, but he was. He was telling me to hurry up and that he didn't have all day. He also said the service here was lousy and he didn't know how I kept my job being so slow. There was also a line forming behind him. So I get to the end of counting and oh, what a shame, he's five cents short. I tell him and he says I'm joking. I show him the piles and tell him to count it then if I don't believe him. He starts looking in pockets and his wallet, no coins. It's just five cents, it's not that much. Then you have no problem paying it, sir. He starts looking panicked and looks at others in line for help, but many are regulars and on good terms with me. They've overheard how crappy he's been and none are offering him anything. Look, it's just five cents, I'll come back tomorrow. Sorry, sir, but if you leave without paying the full amount, it constitutes a drive-off and the police will need to be informed. He goes pale. Then he goes bright red and pulls out a $100 bill he had the whole time. Oh, I thought you said you had no other form of payment, sir, I say, drawing it out. Just take it. I'd be happy to, but first I'll load all your coins back into your bags for you. He's bright red and I can practically feel the embarrassment coming off him, when he finally leaves, the people in line are staring daggers at him. Then one of the regular customers in line steps up and picks up the five cent piece. He must have seen the guy drop it too. Serves him right for being an a-hole, he says. Haha, <laughs> that felt good. I love the fact that the customers were pissed but patient enough to not say anything about the five cents. I would have done the same. And our last story. Swimming pools seem to attract entitled parents. We have an apartment on one side of our house that we rent out. Tenant is a great guy, easy going, quiet, pays his rent on time, etc. We have a pool on our side of the property that he's allowed to use. In his lease agreement, it states that he's allowed to use it, but his guests are not. The reasoning behind this is a liability issue. I don't want my home liability insurance premiums to skyrocket if anything happens. A few months ago, he had a co-worker pitch up who didn't ask and just assumed that he could bring his young daughter with to swim. Once the guy and his kid arrived, my tenant quickly came to ask for permission for the girl to swim. I told him that it was a liability issue and unfortunately, I couldn't allow it, especially since the kid was around six years old and wouldn't even be able to stand in the shallow end. This ED insisted on speaking with me and then tried to guilt me into letting his daughter swim because he'd already promised his daughter that she could swim. When I wouldn't give in, he called me a B, and then as with all entitled parents, this dude turned to his daughter and told her that the mean lady wouldn't let her swim and that they had to go home. The kid started crying and whining, but you promised. Sorry kid, I'm not required to keep to the promises your dad makes. My tenant was very apologetic, he didn't even know the guy all that well. The guy just pitched up and demanded that his kid be allowed to swim. That's when you say, actually, your dad shouldn't be promising something that he can't pay for himself. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.